Lab number 246. In this lab, we will continue the development of our hybrid wallet application. And right now, it's time to focus on transactions, time to focus also on card limits, and so on. I will start with creating the backend box just the same way as we did previously. We will be using a sandbox service. So just open the browser and navigate to get sandbox. And then basically, you need to sign in with your credentials. So as you remember, we created already here the, some kind of uh, services uh, mockups and I've called it hybrid wallet for you, probably the name uh, will be different. Uh, so what we need to do is first to create the mock of our uh, transactions. We need to request transactions and in response we should get this list. So uh, basically we can modify these users with the username here. And first of all, uh, let's change the URL. So let it be something like uh, get card transactions. And afterwards uh, we will pass ID. So based on this URL that we got, uh, we will actually define uh, for which card we need a transaction. And in order not to hard code the reply somehow uh, manually, we will do it by uh, actually copying uh, predefined reply. So for that, open the lab246 files folder, either uh, on Dropbox, either if you download it uh, on your machine and open the transactions.js file with some kind of uh, text editor and copy everything that is inside. And pass here, replacing everything that we have here. So basically what's happening here is that, uh, first of all, uh, we define if uh, this ID that was passed as the parameters to request, uh, as the URL part of the URL, uh, if it equal to our card ID. So uh, we have four different card IDs and for each one, we reply with the different transaction that has ID, uh, with our card that has a balance. And then the transaction uh, itself, uh, including amount, place, date, uh, and transaction ideals. So we can uh, save these changes and check how it will look. So let's pass some valid ID. This one, for example. And this is the response that we got. Uh, so basically it's working uh, perfect and uh, we also need to add two more services for getting limit and setting limit. So uh, basically again in order not to uh, hard code we can go back to our lab uh, 246 files and uh, open the file called uh, get limit. So here we, we will have a response uh, with the current limit and different options that we have. Uh, quite simple. So let's copy it and modify these users. Uh, the URL should be something like get limit. And then we can replace everything that's inside. And just like that. Let's check if it's working. Yep. And the last thing we need to create is a set limit. So we will create it from scratch. Uh, just click add new road. Uh, the URL will be set limit. Uh, road type, everything will remain the same. Uh, so what we'll do, we won't check what is uh, kind of things that we, we got. Uh, we will just uh, remove here everything except the Accept the status, but before that we need to create this request, so we will able to move it um, and then just uh, leave uh, response status to 100, which means OK and uh, status OK for, for response itself. So now we can click update and check if our set limit is working. Yeah, it's working. Now when we have our backend emulation, it's time to prepare adapters that will call those services. So for that, uh, let's open our text editor. And first of all, we'll be interested in a hybrid wallet server. 
and uh, actually what we will need here is adapters so you remember we already have this wallet adapter and alpha adapter so we are now starting modif modifying the wallet adapter uh, first of all uh, we will declare additional procedures uh, that we will create so I will copy this get cards because we also will need security tests so all of them will be secured um, so what we have here uh, one of them uh, something like get cards transactions or get card transactions like that then we also need set limit and we also need get limit now after saving this xml file uh, we can actually open the gs file and uh, we need to implement these calls here so first one is simple uh, for get limit we can just copy this get cards uh, pass it again change the name to get limit and change the pass in our case it will be get limit and that's it basically our uh, call to get limit service is finished uh, for change limit and uh, get card transactions it will be a bit different because we will have input parameter so let's start with uh, get card transactions let's call input parameter something like card id so here in pass we will need to say get card transactions and uh, then we also need to add here our card id that we got as an input parameter and basically that's it and then copy it once again for change limit or set limit let's call it set limit because this is how we call the service so uh, as an input parameter we will have something like limit and then here in pass I'll pass the limit Actually, we don't even need to pass a uh, limit here because we are not validating on, on that side. We have only response that it's working. So actually what we can do is to change this URL to set limits and everything else, I mean the real limit set and whatever like that uh, can be done only if we'll have a backend prepared for that, which is not the case uh, for our lab series. So basically that's it, we can save this and uh, then open terminal in bottom panel, navigate to our server uh, project, hybrid wallet server. I will need to start server first. Uh, if your habit already started, please type MFP push. For me, I will type MFP start and during the startup, uh, all changes will be pushed. So now when our server started uh, and actual adapter deployed, uh, we can try and call these adapters. So for that we will need to type MFP invoke. Uh, are we interested in the wallet adapter? And first of all, let's start with get card transactions. So here we need to specify parameters and we will have only one, the ID. As you remember, it's quite complex. So this one is the ID. I will copy it from here and then pass here and basically that's it that we need to pass to this get card transactions yeah and as you see uh, the response is credentials required because we are not having um, we are not passing here the credentials I mean the username and the password so uh, until we'll change the properties for forexml uh, we won't be able to call any of those uh, services and this is good this is the security this is why we actually uh, enabled it so we'll test all of those adapters afterwards in in the real app so next step for us is actually uh, within the hybrid uh, 
application, the Corolla project, we need first of all to create the services. As you remember, uh, we have a services that perform in a call to a server side. Actually, we can remove this initial factory that was here from the beginning. And yeah, we have our card service uh, that actually for now doing requests uh, to get the list of cards. So what we can do is we can copy this uh, and duplicate. So let's call this one something like uh, request transactions. So the URL will be get card transactions. Uh, so we will have a single parameter, so we don't need set query parameters. We need uh, to enable set query parameter. It's important here. And basically because our parameter uh, will be not really a JSON object and uh, actually adapter expects the JSON object, uh, we will need to uh, pass their text. So it can be achieved with construction like this. So we need to uh, put the single quotes inside uh, and then double quotes and then basically in the middle of uh, such construction we will pass our um, input parameter. So let's call it card ID. So this construction actually will allow us to pass the card ID as a text and it will be uh, taken as, as a JSON object. Uh, then we will actually copy the same and pass one again uh, for set uh, limit. So let's call it set limit. And the URL will be set limit. And here instead card ID, uh, we will have the input parameter. Let's call it the same limit. And we will pass it right here in input parameters. And the last one here for now uh, will be get limit. So let's call it uh, request limit. The URL will be get limits. Uh, we don't have any uh, parameters inside, so just empty as it was before for set query parameters. And we also need to clear input parameter. And now we can save this service as GS. We're finished with modifying it for now. Uh, so next up is the controllers. And the first thing that we will change here is this scope card index. Because as you remember, we used Angular Carousel that has some issues with uh, two-way binding. So actually after we set this card index and change the slide, it's not coming back. So uh, we need to, in order to fix that, we need to add really simple issue. This should be a complex object and inside should be the ID. Um, just like that, card index.id, and because we did that change, we also need to change the template. In our case, it's top cards, so here instead, card index will have card index id. Now the binding will work. So after doing this uh, small change, let's go back to controllers, and we will need to create a new function, something like load transactions, uh, that will be called here after we reach the end of our uh, for each cycle. So let's define it here. So as an input parameter of this load transaction, we will need to pass the card ID. So we will have it, um, let's call the, this input parameter something like C index, not ordered to mess with a lot of uh, card indexes. Uh, so here, Inside our function, what we actually need to do is, first of all, uh, to call our service. And for that, we can copy a construction that was above for, for load cards, uh, because it's actually almost the same. So we will copy this part. Let's close this one. Uh, but for login, I uh, will have here called load transactions instead of load cards. This will be a first change. Uh, and we'll also specify which uh, card we are looking for. So for index and then pass here this uh, C 
see index. Because our card index is just a number rather than a card ID, we will need to transform this uh, C index into a real card ID. So uh, we will do it quite simple. Let's create here a variable, something like cards ID. And uh, this should be equal to our uh, card ID inside our cards. And in order to get that, uh, we will use construction like this. We will search for cards, uh, I mean for specific card in, in a cards array with our index that we just got from input parameter C index and we will get the appropriate one and then uh, assign ID of that to our card ID. So let's have one more login. So just to clarify that uh, we did it correctly. card ID is and then card ID. Just like that. Now instead uh, of request cards, we will request uh, transactions. And as an input parameter, we will put here our card ID. Uh, so here, after successful callback, um, we will need to uh, actually assign our results to some value. Let's call it something like card uh, transactions. And because we will uh, load it multiple times for different cards, uh, let's have here a construction, something like card transactions. And then we will have card ID. So this will be a variable that uh, will dynamically be created based on card ID. Uh, will be equal to our result. And we can also do a login here to verify that we got it correctly. And because it will be pretty hard to determine this exact card ID uh, during the display of our uh, transactions, I mean on HTML page, we will also create some kind of uh, current uh, transactions variable where we will actually each time we are doing this load transaction request reassign it to new results uh, that we got. So something like scope current transactions equal to this uh, specific transactions for a specific card. And afterwards we will uh, apply changes to scope just like that and now we need to init uh, those variables at the beginning so card transactions and current transactions And what else is great to do here is to define actually if we already have this uh, card transactions for a specific card or we need to request it from a server because each time we are changing a card we actually need to display the list of transactions specifically for this card. Uh, instead of downloading each time the, the new list while we're inside the one session inside uh, same application or with the same user credentials, it will be great to check if we have this variable in DOM. And this can be achieved uh, by a simple check if else. So uh, let's have this check here. If uh, we will check for undefined, so the construction should be something like uh, if type of and then our variable in our case it's the scope transactions card ID uh, is not undefined. I mean, if it is undefined, then we will perform this uh, call to get and assign uh, to this variable the correct transactions. And else, if it's already there, uh, we will just do the same login. And 
and same uh, scope apply but without uh, calling the backend service. So we can add uh, some additional uh, login steps, something like Uh, requesting transactions from server and here we will have a login something like already have transactions for this card And now we need to actually call this uh, scope load transactions and we will do it as I said right here. Uh, so because we will be calling load transactions with scope applied there, we can simply remove it from here. Uh, so here in the load transactions, we will need to pass our uh, scope uh, card index uh, and ID that we will get from uh, actually the Angular carousel with two bindings that will work now. And we will also add here a construction for watching the variable. So the idea is that each time uh, something will uh, change. I mean we will change the carousel slide so this ID will be changed. We will need to detect this change and uh, actually call load transactions with a proper value. And we can do it by uh, watching for this variable. So the uh, construction looks like this scope watch. Then we need to provide uh, the variable that we are watching for. So in our case, it's card index ID. And then uh, we can specify the actual what we will do. So in our case, so I will just create a function. And inside this function, we will do the same. We will call this uh, load transactions with specific ID. So afterwards, each time the slide will be changed, we'll detect this uh, card index ID and we'll be continue calling load transactions. And now we need to work on our uh, HTML. So for that, let's open uh, tab cards. And as you remember here, we already have this carousel demo. So uh, what we will add afterwards and before the canvas that is hidden, uh, we will actually add the information about balance. We'll have separate div for that. And then we will have uh, within the scroll, we'll have our transactions that are scrollable and we are able to look for a specific transaction on a specific card. So this list will be updated when we are scrolling the carousel, we automatically will get the new list of transactions. So let's add this first div with the balance. Uh, so the class in our case will be a stable background. It means that it will be like light gray uh, background. And we also have a class balance in our CSS to display it a bit uh, styly with a specific font and so on. We will add CSS afterwards. Um, and then we will have ng uh, show directive uh, that actually will do the following we won't be seeing this div in case we have no transactions. I mean, uh, if something wrong with the card, so we won't display that. And for that, we will need to check for our current transactions and then balance inside it. And basically, if it's uh, not equal to undefined, uh, then this diff will be shown. If in case it's equal, then it's not. And uh, basically inside we will show the same, we will show this current transaction balance. Just like that. And then afterwards uh, we will have a component called ion scroll. Uh, so ion scroll is used to implement the scrolling uh, inside the page. So I don't want all page to be scrolled and for that we will set here on ion content scroll to false because otherwise whole page will be scrolled and our heads with the card carousel will be hidden when we are scrolling down and seeing the transactions and the idea is that that part is always stable and then we implement the scrolling only for transactions uh, and balance is also stable. So ion scroll, we need to provide uh, direction. 
in our case uh, direction will be y and uh, we also need uh, to provide some CSS to determine what will be the size of this scrolling uh, components so in our case uh, we'll have uh, transactions uh, scroll class in our CSS So inside we will put repeatable list, for that let's go to uh, Ionic documentation and look for CSS uh, that represents lists. So we will need something like uh, that with the span text, so let's copy one of the examples here. Uh, instead of this Grammy spam text, we will have here uh, the uh, amount of our transaction. Let's call it something like transaction. And then uh, we will have uh, amount inside. Uh, we don't uh, need an icon, so the icon can be removed from here. But what we need is uh, we actually need here place where transaction was done. Uh, something like transactions, transaction uh, place. And let's also add uh, transaction ID. It called uh, transaction ID just like that. And I will add a hash so we'll know that this is the ID. And then on the second row, uh, let's indicate it with uh, P. On the second row, we will have uh, transaction date. So we'll have their date. And transaction date should be filtered a bit different uh, that you used to because as you remember uh, from our uh, sandbox the date we are getting is actually uh, quite a big number um, and it should be filtered uh, in the following way we just need to apply the angular date filter with medium parameter so this will allow us to filter that uh, big number uh, in, inside the real date, to the real date, I mean. And the last thing here is to implement actually a, repetition, a repeating of our items, so we'll do it with ng repeat. And basically here inside we'll repeat uh, this transaction um, inside our current transactions. And inside current transactions, as you remember, we will have here a transaction as a repeatable uh, set of transactions. So we'll need to uh, say current transactions dot transactions. Just like that. Uh, the final thing is we will need to add on top ID for our view because the CSS is rely on that. So in our case, the ID will be cards. And uh, because we are talking uh, about CSS a lot, so let's open uh, our lab 246 files again, either on, on Dropbox, either on your machine if you already downloaded that, and uh, open the style CSS file with any text editor and copy everything that is inside. and then open your CSS inside style CSS and pass afterwards. So this is part of uh, best practices working with CSS and HTML and so on, but this is not the case of our labs. So the idea is that showcase the platform and get used to work with it. So just copy that CSS and we'll have important styles that we will use here like balance, for example. So now we can go back to terminal, uh, navigate the level app to our Cordova project and then type MFP push to actually push our application to a server and uh, check how it looks. With MFP preview. So let's check what is wrong. Yeah, problem with the syntax. Yes, we forgot to remove this uh, that was left for previous factory. So let's change this one. Yep. 
yes, and then the equal sign here. So we can push the changes to server and just refresh this page. Yeah, so we are messing around with current transaction and, and current transactions. So here we have uh, current transactions in, in the controller and afterwards everything goes S, current transactions. So we also need to change it um, in our top cards to current transactions. Save this and push once again. And yeah, the final thing that we need to change is uh, this one. So as you see, we are um, actually creating card index ID, but we don't have a card index yet. So we should uh, perform this first. We should initialize the card index and afterwards we can set ID of it. Okay, and now we have our username and password. Let's type the correct one, uh, user and password. And here we go. So we have our cards, uh, we have our balance. Let's, by the way, add the dollar sign uh, here to the template, just like that. And inside we have uh, actually in the scroll list uh, list of transactions uh, with the amount. Again, we need to add a dollar sign here. And just like that. Um, and the only issue is that uh, we see in this error with digest already in progress. This is happening because our scope apply and we can actually call the safe uh, scope apply to check if the previous digest is not finished yet, but uh, we can just ignore it for now because again, this is not the case of our lab series uh, to do best practices in terms of uh, client side coding of UI and so on. Uh, so what we also will change is, uh, let's remove this padding, so everything will be full screen, I mean this uh, stable background and then the list. So uh, we should do it here on ion content, remove class padding. And let's push the changes. And refresh the page. So here, here we have now it's full, full list. So what's happened when we are changing uh, actually the card? As you see, the balance is updated and the list of transactions is updated. And it says requesting transactions from server because we didn't have it previously, but if we'll go back, uh, we have seen that already have transactions for this card. Uh, and if we are going to something unknown, again, requesting transactions for, from server. So this is working as expected. And now we will also need to add uh, change limit capabilities here to our action sheet and add a page for that. So let's go back to our text editor and first of all uh, we will open the app.js to uh, define a new page for limits. So here we already have top settings so let's just copy them once again. I will remove this uh, dot with comma and pass it here in the last uh, state. And what we will have here is tab settings uh, limits with one M of course. And the URL will be tab settings slash uh, limits. And the view will be the same. Uh, the template, let's call it something like just limits. And the controller will still remain the same. Now we need to create a page and templates a folder, so we call it limits, HTML, so let it be like that. And here uh, we can open one of the examples, uh, something like uh, chat detail, for example. 
and copy the content from there and pass inside our limits page. So we'll need to add ID because CSS will rely on that uh, limit in our case. And then the view title uh, should be something like change limit. We don't need padding here. And we will also specify that scroll will be set to false, so we won't be able to scroll this page. And then inside we'll have a first div with some text, second one with our limits, uh, and, and third one it was some kind of button that will allow us to change this limit. So let's start uh, with the text. So uh, class here will be something like centered. This is part of our CSS able us to uh, set uh, this element in center and assign text elegant to center. And we'll also do padding here and margin limit to specify the distance from top. And then inside, uh, we'll put a simple text, something like change limit for single card operation, just like that. Uh, then we will have our limits and we'll implement for that another carousel uh, that's called uh, morph carousel. We'll uh, install this extension a bit later. So uh, here uh, we will have class padding only from top. This is the standard Ionic sync and uh, carousel uh, limits. Uh, this is part of our CSS. So inside we'll put our uh, carousel component and then the final thing is I uh, will add a button. So uh, this button will be inside another div. Uh, the class should be uh, full width to specify uh, that it will be using the full width of our page. Just like that. And then uh, the button itself. So for that we will go to Ionic, uh, to buttons and uh, check the outline button. Something like this. So uh, the button uh, label will be something like just change. And then uh, together with these classes that are already here, we'll add centered. And uh, wallet button, that is again part of our CSS. And then we'll specify the action. What would happen if somebody will click on this button? In our case, uh, there will be a set limit called uh, the function that we will define in a second. Right after we will finish uh, with our carousel component. So to find that, uh, to download it, let's go to the Google and type uh, morph uh, carousel. So this is the first thing that we are uh, looking for. Here is how it looks. We will use the white templates uh, just like that and a bit of more CSS. Um, so uh, this is just pretty simple. Uh, from our backend we will get a um, list of available options and so we will assign the current li limit to a selected option. And then basically I uh, will add directive uh, that will display this carousel and each time we are actually changing uh, the value and clicking on um, and this set limits uh, to call a function, we will be actually passing the selected item as an input parameter. So let's click on download zip to download the archive in order not to mess with git. And then uh, let's extract this one to our downloads. So uh, Let's rename this folder to something like uh, simple uh, morph uh, carousel, just like that, and copy this uh, folder and pass inside our dev 
workspaces, hybrid wallet, Cordova, then www.lib, just like that. And now we can access it from, from here, from our lib. And first of all, we will need to, to load this in our uh, HTML. So let's open index.html right here. So uh, let's start with the CSS files. We need to load the basic one, this one, and then the white team. Uh, so I will do it by copying uh, already existing loads for style CSS and then replacing it with uh, the full pass of our CSS. Of course, everything after lib before we don't need uh, data. And um, the white team CSS also need to be present here. Just like that. And we also will need a JS. Uh, so JavaScript file can be loaded somewhere here. Just like that. And then we need to open app.js and add dependency to this morph carousel there. So some, somewhere here. Morph carousel, just like that. And now we can go back to uh, GitHub page and uh, copy uh, directive, how it will look and pass inside our limits HTML right here inside carousel limit. So what we need to change here is just this data items. In our case, uh, let's call it uh, limit. Just and here when we will be calling this uh, set limit, we will need to pass inside uh, selected item. Like that. And let's rename it to selected limit also. So now we can close this HTML and uh, go back to our controllers and we need to define a button uh, that will be actually initialized the navigation to our limits page and we'll have it right here. Uh, let's call it something uh, like change limit. We don't need any other buttons there. So uh, we don't need delete. We already have the logout and we will also uh, rename the title, something like settings should be appropriate. So what's happening when somebody click a button, we have this button index. So let's just be simple if uh, check if uh, this index uh, is equal to uh, zero because we're starting counting from, from, from zero. Then uh, what we will do is first of all, uh, we will do a navigation. So state go and then uh, name of our page uh, state. So in our case, it's tab settings limits, how we called it in AppGS uh, right here. But actually, instead of doing the pure navigation, it's better to uh, load the limits before we are displaying the page so people when they're opening the page will already see the cursor and not wait for it to load so we'll try to request this limit right here and for that we'll copy one of the examples um, that we have on top this for example to be able to call it in tabs controller we will need to add a reference here to our card uh, service and we also need the reference to state because we will do a navigation. And now here inside, uh, we will do a state go only in case of uh, success with our call. Uh, we don't need scope apply actually. And instead of request transactions, we will uh, request limit with no input parameters here. 
another variable to be seen across multiple controllers we can use root scope this is not the best practice but it will work so let's do it uh, root scope otherwise the scope will be visible only for this controller and after we will change the page nothing will be seen so uh, let's create a variable something like root scope uh, limit and we'll assign options that we got uh, from our uh, server response to the scope limits. Options has this number and the value as you remember from our uh, sandbox here. And we will just set that uh, limit options are for login and put here this root scope limit with options and then we will create the second login and we'll also need a variable something like selected limit so again root scope selected limit and here because again the system that I mean this morph cars are expecting JSON we will need to add a construction looking like this uh, number and then the number will be equal to our text that we will get from um, our result um, current limit so this one And here for login, we'll have current uh, limits is and put here the value of, of our limit. And afterwards, we'll perform the navigation itself. So uh, we will need to add a reference to root scope here on our tabs controller. And uh, what we also need to do is to initialize this uh, root scope limit. And also root scope selected limit. Just like this. And now inside settings controller, as you remember, uh, we defined on that um, con controller, uh, I mean, uh, on this HTML page, a set limit function. So we'll need to define it also here. Uh, set limits with the input parameter that we got. Uh, so let's call it something like new limit. Uh, let's implement the simple login here just to know what we are trying to set. Uh, something like new limit to set, to be set. And then the value that we just got, new limit. And you remember that it's JSON object. So inside we have a number with our text. And then we need to call a service once again. So we'll again copy the same construction. So because we are not doing anything uh, specific on the server side, let's just log the response, something like server uh, response or even better limit service and then just the result that we got. just like that um, and we will need to also do a navigation let's navigate to our tab cards uh, after successful setting of overlay so in order this to work we will need to add references uh, here we will have state first of all and then our card service uh, so we will able to call it and now we can go back to console and do mfp push
So let's go back to our uh, cards page and refresh it. Uh, login is user, password is password. So let's try to change limit. Yep, Android scope is not defined. Uh, let's check exactly where the issue is. Yeah, uh, dollar sign here. So let's go back and change it. And then push again. And refresh the page. Current limit is not visible. Um, actually, it's visible in the console, but not um, here because we need to set a reference uh, to this controller. I mean, to settings controller to root scope. Um, otherwise, in HTML, we won't see it and we. Uh, need it so let's add it here with scope and push once again so let's go back refresh the page and change the limit Yep, and it's anyway undefined, uh, so let's check, selected limit, yeah, selected limit should be without S, so now it will work, let's push once again. Now it works, we have 85 as default one. So for example, if we change into 50 and click and change, as you see, the new limit sets 50 and we have a server response uh, with the status okay. And we navigate it to cards. So we're almost done. We will finish this lab with modifying uh, a bit of styles. Uh, so first of all, we'll open tabs page. and uh, we'll change the icons here. So instead of iron pools, uh, we will have here a uh, card and the same for on, ion card. And we'll rename it to cards, just like that. Instead of chats, we'll have messages. So for, for icon, uh, we'll have just ion chat boxes without outline for both on and off. And here for, for settings, uh, we'll have ion year uh, minus A for both on and off. And we will also modify the login HTML. So here, first of all, we'll add ID uh, for our CSS to work. So uh, ID will be login. Next, uh, we will add the logo here. So our logo won't be a picture. It will be just um, text with two colors. So class logo, I will actually define the font styles and spacing. And inside we'll have two divs. So first one uh, will have class positive and inline. So both of them will be um, kind of placed together on the same line. So here we will type hybrid in, in blue color. And we will also put here a non-breakable uh, space. So we'll see actually a space. Um, code is like this 
And the second div uh, will be uh, with the class dark and also in line. And here we will type wallet. Just like that. Now our list will be inside another div. Um, let's call it uh, based on CSS login window. I mean the class. So uh, list will have a padding button class. Uh, so the button will be inside another div. So we'll call it full list that we already used on the limits page. And padding will be only from the top. Padding top. Additional classes to a button uh, will be centered. Instead of uh, button block, uh, we will have here button outline and additionally we will add wallet button class and instead of logging into account let's just type something like sign in so we need to also close this div here our error text will have a login error as additional class just like that and we need to close uh, our div login window i mean div that's it we can save this uh, push it and see what changed so let's go back uh, let's go to resources uh, session storage and remove all the keys for authentication and then refresh the cards page. So here we have our login window with some styles, uh, user, password. And now we have the icons, cards, messages, and settings. And basically that's it. On this step, uh, our lab number 246 is finished.